So today in looking at rhombuses, a rhombus is a parallelogram. So we have all the properties of a parallelogram to the right. Okay, so a rhombus is going to have all of those properties. Okay, what's different is that it has four congruent sides. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to put C top right because we just highlighted all the properties. Okay, let's note here um, that all four sides are congruent. Now, the diagonals are not congruent because of that slant still. One's going to be longer than the other. But what's interesting about the diagonals of a rhombus is that they are perpendicular. So the symbol is the upside down T. So we're going to draw the diagonals, diagonal AC and diagonal BD, and they are perpendicular. So what type of triangles do you have inside? We end up with four, well that's a 90, this is a 90, all of these triangles end up being a right triangle. So we end up with four right triangles. So you may have to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, Pythagorean theorem. If you know your triples, the 3, 4, 5, what's another triple? 6, 8, 10, any others? 5, 12, 13, 8, 15, 17, 7, 24, 25 is the um, big one. And then the last property is that each diagonal is going to bisect a pair of opposite angles. So this angle right here, I'm going to say, looks to be acute. So let's say it's 40. What it means to bisect is when you draw this diagonal, it splits that 40 degree angle into two. 20. 20. Good, Tony. So this is 20 and this is 20. Well, we know opposite angles are congruent because it's a parallelogram. So this is 20, this is 20, this is 20, and that's 20. Okay, it's the same for both. So let's take a look at example number one. We're going to use the same picture for, for all four parts, um, A through D. So I'm going to use different colors. Okay, if you have different colors, you can do the same. You have your angle properties and then side properties. So to the right, it says this angle. So if you highlight the angle F, J, H, J being the letter in the middle, so that's your vertex J. Well, if the whole thing is 82, rather than putting in the whole thing is 82, what's each piece? 30 and 30. No. The diagonal bisects it. So if you cut 82 in half, 41. 41. So let's put 41 and 41. Let's make note of the four 90 degree angles in the rhombus. And then we want to find the measure of angle K, H, J. So let's highlight that. K, H, J is going to be this one. Well, let's connect the other two vertices to make that triangle. And a right triangle or any triangle in general, there are how many degrees in a triangle? 180. So if we know this is 90, we know this is 41, let's call that X. So therefore, X plus 41 plus 90 is equal to 180. 41 and 90 together, the sum would be, we combine those two. 9 and 4 is 13, so that would be 131. Subtract 131, and we get 49. So the measure, I want to say X, of K, H, J is 49 degrees. So in part B it says that F, K is 5. So I'm going to highlight that in blue. We took the time to record the triples here below the rhombus. As we have some right triangles, it might make it easier for the work. So F, K is 5. 
and then FG is 13. So if I finish by connecting these two vertices to look at this right triangle, it wants to know KJ. Well, KJ is the same as KG. So if we can find KG, we know KJ. This is the 5 watt 13 triple, 12. So remember, if KG is 12, KJ is going to be 12 because the diagonals bisect each other. So KJ is 12. Nope. Now, part C, it says if GH and JH. Well, first know our GH and JH sides are part of the diagonals. GH and JH. Are they sides or part of the diagonals? What's that? Sides. So if this, they're sides, sides are congruent. So we take these expressions. If you look in the picture, GH is right here, JH is right there, and their lengths are equal. So set them equal to, so X plus 9 equals 5X minus 2. So that's the equation you would use to solve it. Subtract the X, you get 4X. Add the 2 over, you get 11. Divide 11 by 4, and what do we get? 2.75. Good. So x equals 2.75. And last for the rhombus, take a moment to highlight angle F, G, K. Where is angle F, G, K? I'll do that in pink since I haven't used that color. F, G, Okay, that's this angle right here. And then we're also looking at HGK, which is this angle. What do you know about those two angles? If we look up here, yeah, the diagonals bisect the angle, so they are congruent. Okay, so this angle here is congruent to this angle right here. Well, if the measures are given algebraically, okay, let's make a note. Angles are congruent, so therefore 6y plus 7 equals 9y minus 5. Go ahead and solve for y. A square, who can fill in the first blank? Is a parallelogram with four, what's true about all four sides in a square? They're congruent. So I'm going to put congruent, measures are equal, same. And what about the four angles? What's that? They're all the same as well. They're going to be right angles. Okay, so let's, a PQRS is a parallelogram, but it's also a parallelogram um, a rectangle and a rhombus. You have that picture, your family tree on the front. So you can flip to that, I don't, so I'm going to draw it. So we have our parallelograms, then it breaks down into rectangle, rhombus, and then square. Okay, you have that on the front of your packet, on that cardstock sheet. Anything below it is that above it. So a square is a rectangle, a square is a rhombus, a square is a parallelogram. Okay, a rectangle is a parallelogram, a rhombus is a parallelogram. So in the first one, let's just make note, all four sides are congruent. And then over here, our angles are 90. I'm just going to draw one diagonal. Well, if it's a rhombus, and we know that the diagonals bisect the angles, here's a 90, and these are also 90, but when you bisect 90, you have 45, 45s. These special right triangles will be given to you on your test. So I want to make note of that relationship in the triangle again, x, x, 
and the hypotenuse would be x radical 2. So you don't have to have that memorized. It'll be on the test for you. But we need to know how to use it. Okay, so let's look at the first question. Anytime you're given a square, go ahead and mark all four sides congruent. I would also put 45 in here everywhere instead of the 90. And all of these angles in the center, bless you, are right. That's the first thing I would do when I get a square. So then we're looking at angle ABD. Let's trace it. Where is ABD? ABD is 45 degrees. So I'm putting that in there. I know that the measure of ABD is 45. So 45 equals 3x minus 6. Because that angle in the corner is going to be 45 degrees. Add the 6 over. We get 51. Divide by 3, and x is 17. If we trace angle D, E, C, well, I covered up E in the middle. D, I want to do that in green. D to E to C, we have that box there, which means that angle is 90 degrees. So 90 equals 2x plus 8. Because the measure of DEC is 90 degrees. Subtract the 8, divide by 2. X is 41. And the last two don't deal with um, angles, but segments. So are they sides or are they part of the diagonals? We didn't mark it. But we said in a rectangle, the diagonals were congruent, right? So in a square, they're congruent. So all pieces or all segments of the diagonals are exactly the same. So let's take a look at what's given. AE and AC. Remember, this was E. AE, let's use blue. AE is right here. And then AC goes all the way down. Does anyone know the relationship with AE and AC? AE is going to be how much of AC? Half. Good. So we're going to take AE, which is x plus 2. That's half. Well, instead of writing it as a half, I'm going to write it as AC over 2. I did that so we can cross multiply instead of working with decimals. So put this over 1, and 1 times 3x plus 13 is, or I'm sorry, minus 13 is equal to, well, what do you get when you double x plus 2? What's that? 2x plus 4, good. Now I'm going to subtract uh, 2x. Add 13 all in one step. Um, those are going to cancel, those are going to cancel, and x is 17. And now BE, though. BE, where is BE? BE is right here. That's the same as any part of the diagonal. So BE, I'm going to say, is equal to AE, and then just do, because AE is x plus 2. 17 plus 2 would be 19. I guess we'll use blue. What's true about AC and BD? They are the sides or diagonals? Diagonals. And the diagonals are, in a square, congruent. So we're going to set 9x minus 7 equal to 5x plus 29. So go ahead and solve for x. So 
Subtract the 5x, add the 7 over, and we'll get 4x equals 36. Divide by 4, and x is 9. Find x, check, we're done. Then find de. de in the picture is right here. Well, de in relation to bd, we double de to get bd. So db is one half of 5x plus 29, which I don't want to write. Let me undo that. DE is half of DB. So let's find um, DB. 5 times 9 plus 29. So 45 and 29. 9 and 4 is 14. Carry the 1 is 74. Okay, now take half of that. Half of 74 is... You're right, 30. Yep, because 7, 7, 14 carry the 1. 3 plus, uh, 3 plus 1 would be 7.